So here we go, our last session. And in this last session on God and Country, we really are just going to deal with uh, the one of the biblical passages in the New Testament that gives us basic teachings about how we're supposed to relate in, in terms of our default position as believers to the governments in which we live. We have dealt with uh, several stories during this six-week study. We've talked about how Jesus viewed government, and then we've looked at four Old Testament passages that basically suggested that there are times when people of faith uh, have to respond to negative government or evil or wicked government uh, without condoning that government and sometimes in open uh, opposition to that government. And uh, we've looked at the examples of these people. But as I've made clear in some of the teachings in, my, in the life groups that I've been involved in, uh, those are, are not the default position. Even though there are times when we dissent and even though there are times when we just outright get up and leave, uh, for, the, for, for the most part, uh, through history, that's just not been allowed. It's uh, either the countries that people live in are so oppressive that they can't escape, or uh, the, the, the governments in which people live are just kind of in that gray area between good and bad. And so really the opportunity for, for believers to just outright dissent or revolt, that, that, that opportunity or, or opportunity is not even the right word, that responsibility is just not clear cut. And uh, so today I want to talk about the fact that, yes, indeed, it needs to be clear-cut because the default position for believers and Christians is that we would be in submission to governing authorities. Now, where do I get that? I get that from the passage in Romans chapter 13, 1 through 4, and I'm not going to read the entire passage. I'll just read one verse from that passage, and that one verse from that passage says this, 13, 1 of Romans let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. And whenever you reflect on Paul's teaching there in Romans chapter 13, we have to take that seriously. It's not like, oh, okay, well, we can just ignore that because we want to ignore it. No, Paul had a good reason for saying that the default position for all believers is that you're going to submit to governing authorities. Even when, and Paul writes this elsewhere in the New Testament, those governing authorities would condone terrible, terrible behaviors like slavery, like opposing Christians, like not respecting different religious beliefs. All of those things, from Paul's perspective, were not excuses to just outright ignore those governing authorities, and, and with good reason, uh, because Paul understood that Christians could get distracted, and if we got distracted, we would make our life all about opposing government or having our own way with regard to culture instead of doing what believers primarily are called to do, and those things which believers are primarily called to do are to worship and serve the Lord their God and to teach others to do the same thing. Those are our primary responsibilities. It's not to go out and march and oppose government. Now, I've done both uh, in my lifetime. I've been part of large anti-abortion rallies. I was a part of one of the biggest anti-abortion rallies in American history, and I'm proud of that. I, I'm proud that I lined up with a million people to, um, uh, to be a part of that march. However, that was a rare exception in my life. For the most part, my life has been focused on worshiping and serving God, and helping others to have that same kind of relationship. And it's a privilege to be in a country where that's what my life can be about because my def default position is that as, as much as possible, I'm gonna follow Romans chapter 13, verse one. Now, I'm gonna give you three questions here in a moment that will kind of lead you in your discussion about when it's right uh, to possibly set aside Romans chapter 13, 13, 1. So let me ask those questions. And first, the first question is, why is submitting to, to governing authorities, as is mentioned in Romans 13, 1, the default position for believers, okay? Why is submitting to governing authorities uh, the default position for believers? Number two, 
When is the right time to disregard Romans 13 as the primary guide for civil behavior? Now, I'm not saying that we ever just com com completely disregard Romans 13.1, but there are moments in time when Romans 13.1 is not the default position and where it gets set aside because the governing authorities have become so wicked and evil. And of course, every instance that we studied, whether it was Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whether it was Esther, whether it was the people of Israel in coming out of Egypt, and every one of those occasions, those people basically set aside Romans 13.1, even though they, they didn't have Romans 13.1 at the same at that time, they still set aside submitting to civil authorities because they knew those civil authorities were out of control. So that returns to the question number two, when is the right time to disregard Romans 13 as our primary guide for civil behavior? And I'm not saying disregard it permanently, just temporarily until the government gets back into where it needs to be. And then finally, number three, how is order and peace a picture of God's love for all people? So the three questions again, why is submitting to governing authorities God's default position for believers? Number two, when is the right time to disregard Romans 13 as our primary guide for civil behavior? Number three, how is order and peace a picture of God's love for all people? And just briefly, I'd like to deal with number three because it's my conviction that the peace that people have uh, traditionally had historically in many countries around this world is a picture of God's love for all people. All people who have had the good fortune of living in countries where you can live, where you can work, where you can speak freely, where you can assemble peaceably, where you can have your own opinions, where the governing authority is not so ubiquitous and, and oppressive that you can't do these kinds of things. Well, those people who've lived in those kinds of countries, like you and I have lived in America, and for the most part, that's the kind of country we've had, have enjoyed one of God's great blessings. And one of the great blessings of God is that there is order in the universe. Now, my conviction is the reason that we have order in the universe and that that order has filtered down to civil governing authorities is because that's God's will. And God has written right and wrong right and wrong in the hearts of all people and one of the things that people know is that order is better than disorder and so as a rule when you reflect or when we reflect as believers on periods of peace on periods of calm on periods of order when we reflect on times when our government is functioning in a healthy manner and not just our gov government but governments around the world then we can see that as nothing else than the blessing of God on this planet that written on the hearts of even leaders, and even though they're not aware of it, uh, written on their hearts is this desire for order, for peace, uh, that people might just live their lives uh, in under governments which are relatively benign and not malignant. So that I think is an important thing and it's an important understanding for us as believers that we know that that's God's blessing for us, and especially those of us who are American believers, that we've been blessed to live in a place where, where our government has been relatively uh, benign, not always the best government, but still benign, and a place where there is room for us to practice our faith, to love our God, and to share with others the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And uh, so I hope you've enjoyed the study that we've had. Answer and discuss the questions that I gave you previously. And I'm going to repeat, repeat them one more time. And uh, just thank you for sticking with me through this uh, six-week series. Here's the three questions again. Why is submitting to governing authority God's default position for all believers for all time? Number two. When is the right time to disregard Romans 13 as a primary guide for civil behavior? And number three, how is order and peace a picture of God's love for all people in a variety of different governments and places around the world? Answer those questions. Enjoy your discussion. God bless you.